That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about the best and worst films at the 73rd Berlin International Film Festival, at least according to uh, my perception. So I prefer to say my favorite and least favorite. Well, you could have said that to begin with, but uh, you saw how many films? 44. So I didn't break my back this year. No. Oh. And uh, you are going to share your top 10 first. No, let's save the best for last. So you want to run down your least favorite? Yeah, we have just five. Let's do it. Okay. Um, number five. Number five, Till the End of the Night by Christoph Hochhausler, a new Berlin, or a Berlin school filmmaker who I haven't seen anything from for quite a while. Uh, it's a genre film. I love the fast bender uh, type undertone, especially in the poster, but I really didn't like this film, which is a, a genre narrative that has interesting... Uh, elements, including a uh, lead who uh, trans character who won uh, the best supporting actor, Silver Bear. And I agree that she's the best part of this film, but I didn't believe anything else about any of this. This script needed to be scrubbed inside out because uh, it just it just doesn't work. And it, two hours is kind of a slog. Number four. Number four, The Plow, uh, the latest fr film from master filmmaker Philip Garrel, starring a gaggle of Garrels. All of his children are in it. And, uh, well, three of them. And his, it was co-written by his wife and Jean-Claude Carrière, who is now deceased. Uh, he won Best Director from the jury, which gave out terrible prizes, I think, this year. And I cannot understand why. I talked to a few people that really dug it and a lot more that didn't. But I thought this was uh, just really a lazy, boring film starring someone's children who are playing a troupe of puppeteers. And it really goes nowhere and has a lot of uh, just banal characterization. Number three. Ingeborg Bachmann, Journey into the Desert, directed by Margareta von Trotta, uh, who's a key figure in the new German wave uh, from the 1970s and has uh, directed quite a few impressive films and periodically goes back to recuperate a very notable, iconic female. Uh, I, I do like her film Hannah Arendt, for instance, or Rosa Luxemburg. She used to work uh, almost exclusively with Barbara Sukova, who is her muse, who is now too old to play this version of Ingeborg Bachmann, who had a torrid relationship with Max Frisch uh, in the late 1950s and charts kind of the abusive uh, part of that four-year relationship and then her, as the title says, journey into the desert to find rejuvenation through a foursome. Uh, I do like Vicky Creeps. This film is wrong in all, in all of the predictable ways that you don't really do a biopic and I think it's, it's oddly edited and all over the place and uh, I, I didn't care for it. Number two. Number two, Mammalia, Romanian film from Sebastian Mihilescu, uh, which is kind of about um, male anxieties and lots of things go awry in a way that it feels like a film. It feels like if Denis Cote remade Midsummer, and while that might sound interesting, that probably would still be more interesting than this, it just feels like a bunch of ideas strung together that, that don't quite work. And what was your least favorite film from the festival? Ararat, uh, Turkish German film directed by Engin Kundag, uh, about a young woman that gets into a purposeful accident in Berlin, supposedly after maybe being sexually assaulted by her boyfriend, and then fleeing to her parents' house in Turkey and dealing with a whole glut of issues there. And again, while that might sound like a minefield of interesting things, uh, none of this film worked at all for me and it's it's filmed with such laboriously long pauses that it's kind of comical and then with outbursts of abuse and <laughs> I, I don't know it just uh it didn't work for me so getting to what you really enjoyed number 10 well first of all i want to come to a, a few films that i feel got ravaged uh that didn't deserve it at all where the opening film she came to me by rebecca miller People tend to always pull apart opening night films at any film festival, but this is a film that I think really comes together quite strongly in a charming way in the third act for like a, a eccentric comedic film that reminded me of like Howard Hawks in the 30s. Uh, so I, I don't know, it just annoyed me that how everybody assumes that you're all going to hate this, so I had to spend my time defending this as long as another film I really like called The Beast in the Jungle, where it's true everything is... 
everything sexy about this film to me except for the lead couple that's at the heart of it because they don't work at all but it's also a really interesting adaptation of a 1903 novella by Henry James which I don't know if people need to read that first to get a better key into understanding what Patrick Chiha is doing with that film but I really appreciated it and I really enjoyed it and uh, I was definitely on the losing end of that all done sure Okay, number 10 of your favorites. The Cage is Looking for a Bird. Chechenian film directed by Malika Maseva. Uh, it was in the Encounters uh, program, I believe, and it's about a 17-year-old whose older sister is desperate to be divorced and can't because she has a child and a mother who's then pushing her uh, into an arranged marriage and her in her way trying to rebel against that. Number nine. The Teacher's Lounge, directed by Ilker Katak, a Turkish-German filmmaker, with a really great lead performance by Leone, Leone Benex, ben, Benesh, uh, who is this teacher that is trying to navigate some very stressful situations between uh, her staff and the students and probably aligning a bit, a bit too much with the students. Number eight. Manadrome, directed by South African filmer John Trengove. Uh, it's also uh, with a very, who I usually don't care for, but Jesse Eisenberg gives a really strong performance uh, of, of this white male, white fragile masculinity that's uh, torn asunder in interesting ways. Become He becomes uh, drafted, not quite radicalized into this, this cult of men that kind of worship masculinity, led by Adrian Brody. And... There are a lot of very interesting things, and I, I found I got emotional in a couple scenes where he's being inducted into this that I think are really disturbing in ways that maybe people weren't able to confront uh, in the whirlwind of a film festival. Number seven. Our Body, directed by Carla Simon, a documentary that's about three hours long, and I, I think I wasn't, unpre I, I wasn't prepared for... Uh, kind of what an emotional wall this film is as well. And simply, it's she's a notable documentarian. She's made some narrative films too. Uh, had decided to uh, focus on this Parisian hospital uh, in the kind of like gyneolo gynecological center and all of the women's issues that kind of are compounded in there. And so we're talking about trans men, uh, women dealing with various sorts of uh, breast, uterine cancer, uh, pe women that are trying to get pregnant, uh, women that need uh, to have abortions, and all of them just kind of being interviewed by their intake counselor, etc. or whatever. And then eventually, while the filmmaker was making this, discovered that she had breast cancer. So her own story becomes part of this tapestry. And uh, I, I was just impressed at kind of just simply watching people and talk about themselves how uh, empathetic and poignant that is. Number six. Living Bad. It's one of two films directed by Portuguese auteur Joao Canijo that were at the film festival. This was in the encounter section. I would recommend watching this one second. Uh, and it's divided into three stories that are all loosely based on plays by Strindberg about the guests in a particular hotel. And that's all I'll say at this moment for that. Number five. Disco Boy. Uh, it's the directorial debut of Giacomo uh, Abram, Ab Abru Abruzese, uh, which won uh, Helene Louvart, uh, lens did, and she won uh, a Silver Bear for Outstanding Achievement in cinema Cinematography, which I agree with. Uh, it stars Franz Rogowski as... Oh, a, my friend. Mm -hmm, okay. As a Belarusian refugee uh, that ends up being intertwined in a strange way with a, a Nigerian man that he killed because he go he escapes into uh, France but in order to retain citizenship he has to become part of the the legionnaires and of, of course go to war and then it ends up killing this man and interesting thing I've happen. always liked the word legionnaires I know because and I know there's like a legionnaires disease or They're, whatever but I really do like that <laughs> Number four. Uh, number four, Past Lives, directed by Celine Song, which is her debut. She's a playwright. Uh, I think there's some probably some autobiographical elements based on how good it is, but it premiered at Sundance, technically, but it was in competition at Berlin. Uh, just a really interesting and heartfelt story about a woman who reconnects, uh, who's from Korea, her parents moved to Canada, and then she becomes a playwright in New York. And years, it, it takes a part in two separate time periods, each 12 years apart, reconnects with this young boy she had a crush on and just navigating that later as a married woman uh, and how, how 
trying to navigate what if she had made a different choice in this man coming back into her life and then meeting for the first time. John Magaro plays her current uh, day husband. Uh, very, uh, again, done, it's something simple that's done in a very profound way that I think is actually rare to see in cinema today. Number three. Totem, the sophomore film from Mexican director Lila Aviles. Uh, and her first film was quite good too, The Chambermaid from 2018. And this is kind of like the opposite in how The Chambermaid played with space. This is about one family, extended family, coming together for a birthday celebration that's actually sending off for a, a young father who's 27 that's dying of cancer. And it's told through different perspectives, but more or less through his, I, th I think, seven-year-old daughter who's kind of trying to comprehend this. Uh, and that's also done, and there's also some levity in there uh, in, in very interesting ways, but yeah, a very enjoyable film. I was surprised this didn't win anything from the jury. I think it took home up for Preshi Prize, though. Number two. Number two. This was a controversial film at the festival. Uh, Femme, directed by Sam H. Freeman and Eng Chun Ping, which is about a uh, young black drag queen named Jules who is uh, assaulted by this white thug uh, and then later has the chance to take vengeance upon him in a very uh, titillating and provocative way and just the w talking about black bodies and white bodies and kind of this inherent the I think pe people were accusing the film of being traumatized into the community but it's dealing dealing with a very traumatic thing and I think that from the conversations I had about it people were missing the point of what it's like to be attracted to or love something that actually wants to seek your destruction and, and what that might do to you or, or you can relate to the I'm not I'm saying that for me personally but uh, I, I'm saying that I'm giving you a warning no I'm just kidding <laughs> go ahead <laughs> uh, two really great performances from the leads uh, I can't recommend the film enough I thought it looked great and it is dealing with things that I think people are really afraid to touch today especially in it, you know we, we should be the community that's also trying to uh, delve into these more troubling aspects of our community and 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 about masculinity and race and I, I don't know it just it bothered me so much that the because immediately I had a visceral response to this film and everywhere I went that I talked about it we didn't want to touch it with a 10-foot pole it felt like and I, I just think that's bullshit and your favorite film from the festival which did win an award from this shit jury uh bad living which won basically won the third place prize and this was the other joao canijo film that was in competition and this is basically about the women the three generations of women running this hotel that these also unha equally unhappy guests are at and strindberg is also like a counterpoint here but also felt very tennessee williams because this is very much my jam a bunch of really bitchy super unhappy women stuck together living on top of one another and how they're trying to navigate that space uh, you know, to me it was heaven. To some people, I'm sure it was torture at a little over two hours, but I uh, really like this film. has a tragic ending, and I I'm happy that it l did at least win something. Very good. Uh, and if you're a fan of Joel Canijo, if you never heard of him before, his 80s stuff is kind of hard to get a hold of, but 2011's Blood of My Blood, not the Marco Bellocchio film of the same title, but his title uh, stars some of these same women. And he works much like uh, Mike Lee does in crafting something over two years that a lot of, I, I believe the dialogue is improvised. Uh, and I think you can tell, these feel like very lived in performances. Okay, well, if you'd like to hear Nick's thoughts on the jury and the jury president, uh, you can find that in episode 97 I, of our podcast. I like Kristen Stewart. I was shocked at how bad these awards were. Well, yep, we'll save that for the podcast. Uh, anything else? No. Hit the thanks button. Bye. <laughs> Uh-huh.